Game modes, as you would know, in any video game, are matches with specific rules and unique objectives players need to complete in order to win. In TF2, these could be things like pushing a cart to the last control point, capturing a flag, or even just defending a control point for the duration of the time limit. But even with all the differences in the game modes, the gameplay can all start to blend together, as each game boils down to doing the same thing of running around, capturing control points, and shooting enemies. For most people, the simple solution might be trying out a different playstyle, or just outright taking a break from TF2. But if none of this works, there is still one final option. This is where community servers come in, or more specifically, custom TF2 game modes from the server browser. TF2 community game modes are pretty much a way to re-experience the core gameplay of TF2, but with new objectives and new rules that differ from the gameplay loop in many casual TF2 game modes. There are many TF2 community game modes out there that many of you might already know, like Verse Saxon Hell, Class Wars, or Death Run, but I'm not going to be talking about those game modes in this video, no. I'm going to talk about the more forgotten side of the community when it comes to custom game modes, and as many of you pointed out in the comments of the last video, I didn't go hard enough when talking about obscure game modes. So I've researched 6 more game modes that you might have not heard about, and even if you're a veteran and have played every single game mode on this list, you'll still learn some new things about the game modes. So without further ado, let me introduce you to the first game mode on this list. Zombie Survival is a game mode that was popularized by Muzelk back in 2016. One team of all engineers have to fend off a team of all medics and survive till the round timer ends. You might be saying, oh that sounds so easy, anyone could do that. Except for the fact that engineers cannot build sentry guns and purely just have to rely on dispensers and shotgun weapons until the time runs out. Usually most vanilla maps in TF2 don't have many good hiding spots or camping spots for engineers, but in most zombie survival servers, there's special custom maps that either remove some clip brushes, invisible walls, to some areas, or just outright open up some areas that you wouldn't be able to normally access, just to give all the NGs a chance at surviving on most maps. But when talking about zombie survival, it's also important to talk about the other version of the mode that came after Muzelg's 24-7 server shut down sometime in 2017, the Black Wonder version. The Black Wonder version of Zombie Survival adds new features to the game mode, like perks and abilities to the Engineer class, and new Medic subclasses. For me, this was the only version of the game mode that I got to play, since I only got into TF2 in 2018, so I can't really tell you which of the two versions I prefer, but from playing this new version of Zombie Survival, there's some things I like that spice up gameplay, like combat being more than just shooting zombies with your shotgun, for the inclusion of subclasses, for the Engineers and Medics, but apart from that, this game mode does have its fair share of problems, mainly from being very complicated and non-beginner friendly, unlike Muzelk's version of the game mode. The addition of random features and gimmicks only further dilute the gameplay and confuse new players. The OG version of Zombie Survival that you are familiar with requires a team effort in most maps to actually win, since nearly every vanilla map has nearly no good hiding spots. On the flip side, Black Wonder Zombie Survival expands maps by removing most boundaries in vanilla maps and adds depth to movement and gameplay with new perks and features. Overall, both versions of Zombie Survival are for two entirely different groups of people, and most of you watching would definitely prefer the original version of the game mode. But considering that both the Muzak version of Zombie Survival and the Black Wonder version are both for the same game mode, I just thought I had to mention both of them for the sake of covering this game mode. TF2 wear is basically just warrior wear, but ported to TF2 with unique minigames that fit the base game. Although this game mode might seem well known, with plenty of TF2 YouTubers out there making videos for it, it has since sunk into irrelevancy, with barely any servers out there with people playing, and unlike Zombie Survival, there isn't a dedicated community for it, so it's safe to say that most TF2 players nowadays have forgotten about TF2 wear. Anyway, let's talk about the actual gameplay for this game mode. Every player starts off in either red team or blue team, and must earn the most points to win. Each round involves a different class and objective. Sometimes you might have to stun Marasmus as Pyro, or taunt kill someone as NG. Every minigame is a vastly different experience from the other, and they're all mostly short and sweet. Every now and then, the game will speed up, and the rounds will get more tense, making it increasingly difficult for players to earn points. And on the rare occasion that two or more players are tied at first place, when the game ends, 
a tiebreaker event will happen, and players will be wiped out if they lose all their lives during this event. Playing this game mode is really fun, and I was lucky enough to get a lobby with a decent amount of people, but just like other old plugins for TF2, it does sometimes bug out a little in specific moments of the game. But other than that, it's a very fun game mode that definitely deserves more players. Back in 2017, when everyone wanted to become a commentary YouTuber, you'd often see the same background footage in every video. And that background footage would be from a game called Mirror's Edge. Imagine that, but in TF2, because that's exactly what Parkour Fortress is, a ripoff version of Mirror's Edge. Parkour Fortress is a 2011 game mode created by Mecha the Slang, where everyone on the same team as Scout has to reach the end of the map in the shortest time possible, by whatever means possible. This being leaping, climbing, or wall running. In order to perform these special actions, you have to keep running for a set period of time to gain momentum, which at first can be a bit off-putting for people who aren't used to the style of movement in a game like TF2, which is the only real flaw for this game mode, at least in the newer versions of it. The servers for this game are still out there, but I have no real players on them. You can blame this on the game mode straying too far away from standard TF2 gameplay, or just because community servers aren't as big as they were before. But nonetheless, it's a pretty obscure game mode nowadays, and if I live closer to where the server was being hosted, I'd definitely have a better experience playing it, as most times, due to my 300 ping, I'd miss a climb or just fall from a rail. But nonetheless, this game mode is incredibly underrated, and it's great if you want to play a budget version of Mirror's Edge with unique TF2 levels. Man vs Machine is a PvE game mode for TF2, where players have to fight waves of robots while collecting cash to be able to upgrade their player's stats. But what if you took this concept of being able to upgrade your character's stats and put it in a normal non-PVE game mode of TF2 and expand it upon it? To best put it, this game mode is basically just the MVM upgrade station, but better, with new upgrades to weapons, like the ability to remove the downsides to a weapon, making it a straight upgrade, or boosting positive stats to a weapon, making it even more overpowered. You can also just upgrade your base stats and give yourself more health, which by itself doesn't sound too bad, but when you have a scout, a character who's meant to have low HP, be able to run around at super fast speeds with the health of a heavy, things start to become chaotic, and combine that with the fact you can make nearly every single item give health on kill, you can basically have everyone become unkillable, with some exceptions of course. In order to upgrade yourself, you need to collect cash, and to do that, you can kill enemies and receive a lump sum of cash straight away, or if you're bad at that, you can rely on your teammates to earn cash for the rest of your team. Or you could just wait around and get it like a welfare bum in Illinois. But anyways, although the concept of MVM upgrades being in regular TF2 gameplay has been done countless times, Uber Upgrades is definitely the original version of it. With the plugin being created in April 2013, a couple months after MVM being created, and in terms of execution, the game mode executes the idea of MVM upgrades in normal TF2 gameplay much better than any other similar plugin, with the ability to change nearly every stat about your weapon and yourself. Overall, the game mode is pretty well made, with the only flaw in its design being how easy it is to become incredibly overpowered, but it isn't really something that detracts too much from the main gameplay. Fort Wars is the most grounded and simplistic game mode with a unique concept which makes it stand out the most in this video so far, as the gameplay can literally be described as building forts in order to help your team capture an intelligence briefcase. Similar to Uber upgrades, the game mode uses a cash system for buying props, which the player can place down, but unlike the previous game mode, cash is limited, meaning you can't go and build a ginormous tower in front of Blue's base, which keeps things more balanced, meaning more fun gameplay. It's almost as if balanced gameplay leads to a better experience for players. The game mode pretty much gives players complete creative freedom, with nearly every construction prop like fences and shipping containers being able to be constructed, and with the inclusion of custom maps with big open hallways and infinite ammo and health, the game mode almost acts like a sandbox game, giving players the ability to build whatever they want, wherever they want. The whole map is your canvas, and it's up to the player to decide what they want to do with it, and how they can use their buildings to their advantage to win the game. From what I've seen, the game mode is really fun to play on, and it's just a shame that not many servers run it, and the servers that do run it barely get any traction. But at least Fort Wars actually had some servers that run it every now and then, because Sandbox hasn't had an active server in years, 
making it the most dead and obscure game mode in this video. Sandbox is exactly what it sounds like. A sandbox version of TF2 that rips off Gmod down to features like the fizz gun being implemented. Sandbox is the only game mode in this video that has no objective or teams, as it's entirely focused on just building and socializing with other people. The way the game mode works is for using a spawnless menu, like the one in Gmod, that pops up on the side once the player presses tab. After this menu is open, you can do things like sporting items in, changing player conditions, and manipulating objects in the world. You can also use chat commands to get tools to do a variety of things, like a fizz gun to move around objects, or a gun that lets you spawn and edit objects. Another thing about Sandbox is that you can't place objects too close to other props that players have summoned or near spawns, reducing the risk of griefing in game which helps it stay as a fun friendly game mode for TF2. Not much can be said about the game mode other than it being a sandbox very similar to Gmod, and hopefully you learn something new about the TF2 community's history. But there's just one last thing before you can click off. I want you, yes you dear viewer, to go try out a new game mode or server in the server browser whenever you start to get bored of the base game modes from TF2. And maybe you'll discover a new server that you love while doing so and just have a lot more fun in the game that you wouldn't normally have had from playing casual or vanilla servers. It's important to step out of your comfort zone every now and then. And as always, have a good one.